Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. In today's episode, we will learn about the seven best practices for writing Node.js based applications. These best practices that I'm going to share with you can be expanded into other tech stack based applications or with any other programming languages. But in the context, we will be talking about Node.js based applications. So let's get started, learn the best practices. Before uh, we start learning about the best practices, a quick word and introduction on Node.js. Node.js is a powerful and popular platform for building server-side applications. So make sure that whenever we are working with Node.js based applications, we are trying to write more scalable, efficient APIs and backend robust, which is scalable too. These best practices that I'm covering in today's episode will help you build high quality, reliable applications that will scale, that is easy to maintain and even update over a period of time. That being said, the, the whole point of these best practices is to make sure that your code is efficient, maintainable and scalable. With that being said, let's get started with the top seven best practices. The first one is a very, very obvious one, which I'm sure a lot of you are already doing it, but continue doing so, which is to use a package manager. Now, a lot of enterprise companies, they have different uh, package managers that they use. Some will use YARN, some will use NPM, some will have their own Nexus repositories type of sort of thing. But whichever package manager do you use, stick to one, okay? So that you manage all the dependencies required in your application through a package manager. Always avoid installing any dependencies manually. And there is a solid reason behind it because when you try to install something manually, the dependency, dev dependencies, etc., will not be pulled in. But if you, if you use a package manager, it would automatically install, update, and manage all the required modules in one single command. Okay, And that's why I always prefer using a package manager. Number two is to use a modular architecture. Now, this is a common uh, generic statement in a in a way, but understand that with Node.js, we you do not want to write all the APIs in one particular file. If you follow Express.js or even for that matter, any uh, Node.js custom framework, always segregate the components separately. For example, you might want to have one file which says users.js, which will have all the APIs related to users. You'll have one API which will say comments.js, which will have all the APIs functionality related to comments. So that way you are segregating out the code and maintaining it into a different files. Doing this has multiple benefits. For one, it's easy to maintain. Second, your code is clean. Third, there is no breakdown of your application, especially when you're trying to change, modify any other pieces. So that way, it's easy to upgrade, maintain in long run. So always think of modular architecture when you design or write your Node.js applications. The third is something that I always encourage everybody to use, which is to always heavily rely on async and await, right? So asynchronous programming is one of the strengths of Node.js, which we should definitely make use of. Now, what this does is it makes promises and handle async task more efficiently to avoid any callback hell. Okay. What that means is that it's a modern way of handling async operations, right? In a way that everything is calling separately and there is no single thread dependency, right? Now, these are important because certain times some APIs may take long time, some may respond faster, but you don't know. So that's why you should always keep your calls as async and use a await statement inside them. Right. So that's a standard process nowadays whenever you build Node.js or say Express.js or even for that matter React and all that, right, uh, Nest.js. So th that is becoming a standard practice to make sure that always use async and await in your code. Now using environment variables. Now this is very, very uh, useful, especially when you're building a large application uh, because you will have to store a lot of environment specific details, configurations, uh, API keys, etc. So what I encourage is create different files where you will store all these variables inside the environment files, right? So it's easy and through a script or through our NPM script, you can tell which environment you want to start and that way it will read those environment variables accordingly. 
So that's a standard practice, never store APIs, passwords in directly anywhere in the code or in anywhere in the functionality or anywhere of those sorts. Instead, always store them into an environment file and start the reading from there. The fifth one is to use logging and debug. Uh, this is pretty standard, uh, not only for Node.js, but any programming language that we use. Uh, put console logs, use logging libraries uh, like Winston, etc. Uh, use try catch blocks to you know um, handle the error exceptions handling etc so idea is simple wherever you think um, enable the console logs in non prod environments disable them in the prod environment right you can also set breakpoints and inspect variables in runtime that's only for debug purpose do not push that code or enable that in prod now optimizing Obviously, Node.js uh, applications are meant to be fast, scalable, and efficient, which means that our HTTP requests uh, should be optimized, right? You don't want to have 20 different API calls coming in. Instead, you can have one API call that is coming in and you internally call using other framework like Axios or something and make a respective calls outside. Have a caching layer, right? Uh, minimize the size of the payloads, right? Especially you don't want to keep a big one big query and dump everything to the UI that doesn't make sense right um, ideally you should have a minimum size of uh, JSON contracts that payloads that you give back also make sure that you don't heavily depend on too many database uh, queries updates let's say for example you want to change a reordering of a table don't go across uh, updating the entire table right you might have a uh, like million records and it will take a lot of time so those things, those are the decisions that you make in terms of architecture. But at the end of the day, you have to optimize it for the performance. So keep that in mind to some of the basic things like reducing the number of HTTP requests, enable a caching layer, uh, reduce the size of your payload payloads that you send, uh, minimize the number of database queries that are going, enable the logs at the server so that you can see which APIs are taking long time and then you can optimize them. The last um, is obviously a very, very important piece. Uh, I'm sure that if you work in any enterprise application, chances are that you'll have a SLA or a contract which says that you need to have at least 99% um, off or 95% off test written. So use testing frameworks like Mocha, Zest, Sign-On, which helps a lot of things in unit testing your script. And the more tests you write, the more you can certify that that piece of code is working against all different kinds of possible data. <coughs> all right, thank you so much. That was my list of uh, top seven best practices on Node.js. Um, I'm sure there are many more, but I'll start covering as and when I learn about it. Uh, the whole point is that I want to share my experience, my knowledge with you, and which is what I'm trying to do with all honesty. I hope you like the video. I hope you learn from it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Keep learning. Keep growing. Also, do check out the best practices that I've shared on HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap. Thank you again so much for joining. See you in the next episode.